My sermon passages are John 3, 16 to 21 and the Didache chapters 5 and 6. First John 3, 16 to 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God sent the son into the world not to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does what is true comes to the light that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been wrought in God. The word of the Lord. May God grant us wisdom and courage for interpretation. And now continuing with the Didache, chapter five, the way of death. But the way of death is this. First of all, it is evil and full of maledictions, murders, adulteries, lusts, fornications, thefts, idolatries, magic arts, charms, robberies, false testimonies, hypocrisy, a double heart, fraud, pride, malice, arrogance, greed, foul speech, jealousy, impudence, disdain, boastfulness, persecutors of the good, haters of truth, lovers of lies, knowing not the reward of righteousness, not cleaving to the good nor to righteous judgment. Awake not for good but for evil, from whom gentleness and patience is far. Lovers of vanity, chasing reward, unmerciful to the poor, not working for the afflicted, without knowledge of their creator, murderers of children, corrupters of God's creation, turning their backs to the needy, oppressing the distressed, advocates of the rich, unjust judges of the poor, altogether utterly sinful. Children, flee from these people. See that no one leads you away from the way of this teaching, for they teach you without God. If then you are able to bear the Lord's yoke fully, you will be perfect. But if you cannot, then do your best. And concerning food, bear what you can but never eat from that which is offered to idols, for that is seen as worship of the dead gods. So here we are continuing with the Didache, a first century training manual for a very early community of Jesus followers, as we also follow the lectionary through Lent. During Lent, yes, this is a tricky way for me to get you to a Lenten book study without you having to come to a book study. That's why we're talking about it during the sermons. We started out three Sundays ago with Didache 1 and 2, an introduction to the way of life and the way of death as taught in the Didache, comparing it with the way of life and death as taught in the biblical book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament. Remember that this training manual was used by Jewish Christians to train non-Jewish pagan Christians on how to be Christians. Christianity was and is deeply rooted in Judaism. And then two weeks ago, we looked at Dedicate 3 and 4 and considered it with the lectionary passage from Matthew. Jesus was still preaching the Sermon on the Mount, and it fit pretty well. Jesus was preaching how to live, things to do, such as turn the other cheek, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, be ye perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect, you know, the easy stuff. Meanwhile, that week... Didache 3 and 4 were outlining how not to live, things not to do, such as be not proud, be not lustful, be not a liar, be meek, be merciful, be guileless, look for people to help reconcile and for you to reconcile with. Like I said, it all fit. Jesus was being Jesus and the Didache was being Jesus-y. And then last week, I skipped ahead in the Didache to chapters 9 and 10 because it was explaining how they did communion way back in that day, and it was our communion Sunday, so I thought we could, we could compare and contrast. 
They did it different, to say the least, back in that day. Cup first, then bread. The words of institution drew a direct connection to King David. Remember, these were Jewish teachers. And in the Thanksgiving prayer, they looked directly forward to the second coming with these words, which I thought about making into a regular closing prayer. They are powerful words. Let grace come and let this world pass away. Hosanna to the God of David. If any man be holy, let him come. If any man be not, let him repent. Maranatha. Amen. Those are powerful words. Last week, I told you that it seemed difficult at first to make, connect, to make a connection between the Didache's how-to on communion and the Matthew passage, which had Jesus being tempted by the devil in the wilderness. But I found the connection in the bread, which the devil tempted Jesus with, which Jesus said man cannot live on alone, right? Since we humans need the word of God as well to hold us together as one. The bread used in communion is a regular demonstration of scattered parts coming together as one. The many different grains into one loaf, just as many different people come together before God in Christ as one family, as God's people. It took some doing to make that connection, but I think I, I, think I made it. This week, I think the passages fit very well. The familiar John 3.16 and the following verses and the dedicates explanation of the way of death. Why? Because one answers the other. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son to save us from the way of death. Y'all know I'm an editor. So I'm going to put these two passages in dialogue with one another to see what they say together. It's a pretty simple copy and paste. I'll signify John's gospel with my right hand and the dedicated with my left hand. It's a pretty simple sermon, just putting it together. So let's listen again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God sent the son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. The way of death is this. First of all, it's evil and full of maledictions, murders, adulteries, lusts, fornications, thefts, idolatries, magic arts, charms, robberies, false testimonies, hypocrisy, a double heart, fraud, pride, malice, arrogance. It goes on and on, this list of nastiness. Children, flee from these people, it says. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does what is true comes to the light, that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been wrought in God. See that no one leads you away from the way of this teaching, for they teach you without God. If then you are able to bear the Lord's yoke fully, you will be perfect. But if you cannot, then do your best." And concerning food, bear what you can, but never eat food from that which is offered to idols, for that is seen as worship of the dead gods. Did you see how naturally it fit? It was almost like it was written together and torn apart. Whosoever believes in, trusts in, relies on the love and mercy and teachings of Jesus as a lens for recognizing the love and mercy of God shall have everlasting life, John says, avoiding the way of death. And here is that way, that evil way, the dedicate says. Spells it out. Be glad it's not your way, Christian. That way, the way of death, it's for those who trust themselves rather than the Lord. The way of death is full of people wallowing in self-indulgence, in defiance of God, soaking in and soaking up sin. They're on their own because they want to be on their own. Altogether, utterly sinful, the Didache says. Children flee from those people. But for those following the way of life, for the faulty yet faithful, there's grace. And it's for individuals. If then you, singular in this case, 
If then you are able to bear the Lord's yoke fully, you'll be perfect. But if you cannot, then do your best. Meat offered to idols is out, period, in both of the Didache and in the Bible. No way. But concerning other controversial food, the Didache says to bear what you can, you, you individual, for the sake of the conscience of others. Finally, here's another reason I think these two passages from John's Gospel and the Didache just fit together. John says, yes, what we believe matters, or rather, one thing matters that we believe. Whosoever believes in Jesus, trusts in, relies on, listens to, disciples under, learns from, and is changed by life with Jesus, shall have everlasting life. But then John shifts into what non converts do. The Didache was written to train believers. They've heard the gospel. People learning from the Didache were already converts, so there's nothing in it about what to believe. It's all about what young learning converts should do. John says those who resist Jesus, who do not trust Jesus, the light of the world, and the way of life are condemned already. John does not say God damns. John says they are condemned by their own lack of trust, by their own self-involvement and self-absorption. And condemned to what? Condemned to the dark way of death. And this is the judgment, John says, that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. Deeds, the things non-believers do in darkness, are exposed by the light of Christ. Some of us teenagers laughed back in the day when our pastor, Brother Phil, declared that the lights were kept low in beer joints and seedy nightclubs so people could hide their sin. We laughed. <coughs> Having lived quite a bit of life since then, and having been a dance hall bouncer one time in a during a desperate summer in Texas, I know now that the preacher was on to something. <laughs> we don't want to know what goes on in the dark in some of these places. John goes on talking about doing, the kind of doing done by those who believe. He who does what is true comes to the light, that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been wrought in God. John declares God's expansive love for the world as seen in Jesus and his teachings. Jesus doesn't condemn us. Jesus saves us. And the Didache offers practical instruction for those who are trusting in Jesus. And the old voices in it from 2,000 years ago can still guide us, I think. The takeaway from the Didache today, I think, is this. If we bear the Lord's yoke fully, if we follow all of his teachings, turning away from violence, loving our messed up neighbors as ourselves, praying and hoping for the best for our enemies, we're perfect. But if we can't, we do our best and we bear what we can. And the takeaway from John, God does not have it in for us even when we are all into ourselves. God is not mad at us, even when we mess up like our messed up neighbors. God loves us even when we are ungodly. Thanks be to God in Christ, we shall not perish on the way of death. We live and we shall live in the eternal light of Christ in the way of life. Amen.